Hi, everyone. I'm Pip from Seymour Digital Media. You're listening to Know How Marketing Lab podcast. This podcast brings together different experts in marketing from our Facebook group, Cyberpunk Geeks Marketing Mixer. Each week we get on here and we talk about something search marketing like Google ads or SEO, social media marketing from Facebook to TikTok or website marketing. If you're a marketer or aspiring marketer, a business owner or entrepreneur, this podcast for you. We're gonna share the best SEO, search, social, uh, and website strategies. We share tips and hacks, Google ad strategies, what's going on in the current market. Each week we discuss something exciting and awesome in marketing. You all know me, I'm Pip, more digital media, and that's Phelan. Phelan? Yeah, I'm also at Seymour Digital Media. <laughs> Our powers combined and we take over the world. We are talking about Looker Studio today because Looker Studio used to be called Data Studio and we love our reporting so we wanted to dive right into that and talk about all the things so if you're doing any sort of reporting and you're not using data studio or looker studio this might not be the one for you but if you are interested in reporting and you want to try google's free tool called data studio looker studio this one's for you phelan what is data studio Looker or what studio. was, I guess, yeah, what was Data Studio? It what is, is now... Looker Studio? Let's just go there. Yeah, so the Looker Studio is, I get, it looks like in 2020, Google bought a company called Looker, which does business intelligence and machine learning. And basically they bought it and they've been, I guess, slowly integrating it into Google Cloud. And so now it's been the official big launch of the Looker as part of their platform. So for a lot of people, when I looked into what are the big changes, a lot of people it aren't going to be affected really that much unless you're on like enterprise level. Because like just using business intelligence, machine learning, most people just don't have the data. Like you need so many huge tables of data for it to be useful for you. So I'd say for the most part, it's a lot of weird fanfare that I don't even know why they changed the name because it doesn't really look or it's not as like valuable unless you're an enterprise person. Oh, okay. So if I'm a small and medium business or a small or medium agency and I use reporting, I don't need to worry about all the fanfare of the changes that they're talking about. Yeah, I honestly, I haven't really found anything where it was like, oh, okay, well, that's the big thing. That's the change that the everyone logo needs to changed. Be <laughs> the logo changed and the name changed, but like beyond that, it's really not, I haven't seen anything that's been super like, Ooh, yeah, that's the big change. It's not like Google analytics four, where that's going to be a huge change and the entire system is completely different. Right. Or Google business profile and how they're spitting out on the search engine results pages to manage it. No complaints, really no complaints. Uh, yeah, yeah. So the reason I guess we like diving into the reporting is because when I started the business before failing came on board and took over when I found this reporting was when I knew I, I felt like I had a business because I felt like I could give something to clients to show what we've done or what's working or what's not working. And it was data studio. We were using data studio in beta. And so now we use data studio and we use an add on called Supermetrics. but we're not going to get into that because you can use the free version and it's gorgeous. It's quite easy to use, even if you don't understand some things, right? Like literally you can click a couple buttons and then yeah. you have a report, your analytics and your search console. And so it's, it's quite easy. And people make templates of these that they even sell, right? Yeah, yeah. It's definitely, yeah, there's a whole ecosystem of kind of add-ons and even like you can make your own custom visualization. So if you wanted something to look a certain way, you could even design it yourself. Like I know that there's what was it like a gauge was one of them, which is kind of cool, oh, like yeah. a like a zero to one hundred. And so if you, if you want to be in a certain range, then you can use this visualization. So there's lots of add-ons, and it's it's smart that Google opened it up so much that people can build their own add-ons. And you can also like when you get really advanced, you can bring in your own special bits of data from like a spreadsheet and then you can configure it to be like, oh, I want it as this number or this type of data comes in. I want it to be labeled like this. 
and you can do all kinds of crazy we're, things. We're like that, doing but. cool things. I mean, okay, so I'm doing some cool things. Mine are maybe about design, which is really weird, but maybe it's because it's square blocks. I can manage it. But you're doing some cool things. Like you brought in Reddit data, you brought in tweets of specific nature. So tracking like a business owner's business name or, right? Yeah. And Twitter yeah. and catching all the tweets. Yeah, so that's one of the really cool ones about the data studio that we've been tapping more into is having like a controller that says like, okay, I want every bit of data on this whole page to be filtered out if it doesn't meet this condition. And like, so you could do things like your search console and it has like a, if the query, so what someone typed into Google contains digital marketing, I want to know how every single keyword that contains the word digital marketing, how those performed in my search console. And so it'll filter everything on the table so you can only get that data. And so it gives you like a really good ability to kind of see, oh, this I'm ranking really well for this. Or, hey, there's a big increase in the number of impressions for this keyword. Mm. I'll actually open up my Google Ads, my data studio and Google Analytics all at the same time. Sometimes when I'm working to kind of dig deeper, I mean... That's what SEOs get to do, which is really fun, right? And Google Ads people, you get to kind of see something and you know you're reporting to your client about something, but then you have to do all the digging under the surface to find like the really cool stuff, like, you know, keywords and ranking and ah, oh, yeah, it's brilliant. So I'm seeing that there's a question here that there's a pro version level of Looker Studio. I'm not sure what, it, are we using the pro version? No, the pro version is very much part of like the Google's marketing 360 platform, which yeah. is their enterprise one, because like a lot of stuff that like a lot of the paid tier of the Google marketing products, the big difference is that one, you're paying them $10,000 a month. And then the other thing is that most of the real tools and dif differentiation is the a business intelligence machine learning aspect. They can't even use Google Sheets. Everything has to be set up in BigQuery because like they've got like million rows of information of so we're talking like what kind of businesses are we talking here like Walmart Walmart Coke okay. Nike uh, Target Hewlett Packard yeah yeah like okay, a big yeah. company that's basically you know they're you know they're having a million dollar couple million dollars for ad budget and their websites are massive and their campaigns are like there's so many bits of data that are going into their campaigns that no human could possibly go through at all so they use the machine learning to basically sort out hey we've noticed this that you know i don't know, like soccer moms in duluth are buying more stuff from us we should really focus more efforts there like weird little trends like that where you're comparing like demographics versus location versus campaign type and it's just you need like so much data to make that work that like yeah. they're going to need that. So our version, we use a slice of the data, right? And we get to look at all this stuff and make pretty good decisions based on the size of the websites we're looking at and stuff like that, right? Yeah, like the, the, the level of data that we're getting from us and our clients is much more manageable that like you you can be like a normal person and just go through and be like, oh, Ooh, hey, that. the... Yeah, like Google Ads is doing really well. It's getting us a bunch of conversions because yeah. like the, just the number is much more manageable that you don't Ooh. need to be thinking about. I got asked what a conversion was from a client, which is really interesting because you just generally think for language purposes that they're going to know what you're talking about. So anybody out there who doesn't know what a conversion is, it is a lead and a lead being like somebody calling or filling out a form or doing those things. I know you probably all know that, but if there's that one person, I got to practice because I got to practice for my class, like, you know, to integrate them into the language. Oh, the other side of conversion can also be a purchase. So if someone um, buys something from your website, that would also count. Yeah. So it's either someone's filling out a form or, you know, some sort of lead or a purchase. That's the other yeah. one. Right. And so... We love the reporting well because it's pretty, it's fun. There's so much ability to move things and make them your own. And is it open source? Is that why other people can make these wicked reports and it's so easy to copy a report? 
it's not technically open source because like we don't know what the coding goes into it but what it would be is there's open apis so basically like it they you don't know what the code is but they said hey you can access the coding by talking to this api connection here's the rules and so it opens it up where basically they've given you the tools to build on top of it of course you need like some sort of coding to really know how to manipulate it properly. And I mean, there's lots of different reportings. I think I like Looker Studio because of all the integrations. Like you can pull in Twitter and YouTube and Reddit and Facebook and Instagram and all you can have all the reporting, right? Yeah, exactly. And it's it's much more I find it's much easier to manipulate the Looker Studio than it is to any of the other platforms. Like it's They've done a pretty good job at it. And, you know, obviously for Google, like their incentive is to give you really good tools so that you keep spending money on Google ads because then you could show your clients that with the Google ads, like, hey, look at this nice report. It's all nice and fancy. and You can look year over year or something like that. Want to know more about SEO? We've got a class for that. Our mission is to educate students about the right tools, techniques, and strategies to grow their businesses using the most up-to-date search engine marketing optimization techniques and tools. Find out more at knowhowmarketinglab.com. Let's talk about reports for a second, just on the level of some of the things we've seen in reporting. Because, so we love Data Studio and it's easy to use and it's free. And it's made by Google. There are reports inside systems like analytics. You can pull data from Search Console on your own. So you can pull out all the information you want. But we see some agencies doing like uh, Google Doc reports. How do you feel about those? We just saw one Uh, the other day. I mean, I think dry is too kind of word i mean it was like i could feel my eyes rolling in the back of my head because like people don't need even if it's just bullet points you know most people just want to see hey green the number increased like you know the number went up it went up by like 30 percent some quick information like that is much more valuable also you know, having it written out compared to like a table where you can actually compare and maybe sort them differently. So I want to know which campaign is getting the most clicks in my Google ads. Okay, which one's getting the most conversions? Are those the same? And what are we doing if they've gone down? Because, you yeah. know, it doesn't go constantly up like a hockey stick all the time, right? Yeah, yeah, for and, sure. And I've seen that in Google ads, sometimes there's a disruption. And then you have to, you're like, oh God, <laughs> and then you're yeah. going in to, to see what's wrong. But reporting is really important. And I think just having the free tool to use and connecting like your just Google Analytics and Search Console together can give you lots of information and it's fun. I think it makes the reporting fun. And I think those other reports are a bit dry, lackluster. And I mean, we have trouble conveying things because the language is like conversions and things like that. And we're working on ways to give people the information they need. So they don't, cause sometimes you feel dumb when you're like, Ooh, what's that? You know what I mean? Like, what is a session? Yeah. What is, what is a page view? All like all terms that business owners aren't going to have time to review or know. Cause that's not what they're in business about. Right. Yeah, exactly. Like there is a a degree of how to communicate it to a client who generally they don't spend all their time thinking about digital marketing. They are thinking about like, did I get more leads? Okay, what are these leads asking for? Like, you know, like they're more concerned about doing the business. Yeah. Or do these people care about my business because, hey, they're seeing this. So they're doing that. Right. I think that that gives it gives a great opportunity. It gives a great opportunity. So we have actually sold worked on somebody's Google ads account, we include SEO in the reports because, I mean, we're connecting everything anyway, but it has given us an opportunity to sell on the other service we offer, right? Yeah, or even expand it out further where it's like, hey, you actually are getting a lot of traffic from Bing. Why don't we put some ad spend? Yeah. Yeah, and so extending out a little further the, the services that you're offering because you're picking up this data that says like, hey, you're actually getting leads organically from Bing. Why don't we put some money into it? And so, 
you know, there's things like that where you can open up new opportunities. And as well, the reporting is really useful for clients because it's a way that you can, they don't just have to take your word for it, right? Like you're having this analytics, it's actually recording it. So they're, they can see, oh, actually, yeah, you guys have been getting my numbers up year over year. Uh, okay, that's really good. And like, it, it, it's a way to quickly show a client what value you're providing them which is right. always hard when you're doing things that could be kind of ethereal, like doing SEO is not always easy to convey how how much better they're doing now than they were six months ago. I also found that because when we send out reports, it's like, you know, month after month, we send a report and we actually download the PDFs. So, well, we can use them as case studies at some point, but so we can also look back quickly and, you know, having kind of a picture to help you visualize and because you can more easily move through numbers when they're in the same places and they're easy to view. It's not some text document. So I guess, so what we're saying is we love reporting. And Oh yeah. Yeah. And also data studio is a very robust system that as you can tell that like what I'd said earlier, you can do infinitely deeper things with it. So it's always like, you're never going to be quite done with it. It's kind of like Google Ads. The, there's always a new thing to learn in the platform, and you're never going to be 100% perfect with it. I did, um, yeah. Go on, sorry. Oh, no, no, go ahead, go ahead. Oh, no, I was just going to you know, talk about myself. No. <laughs> no I was going to talk about how on the weekend I did take the day off, and I did spend a lot of my day playing with the reports. Because, you know, because you can make them look pretty and individualized and... I just, I don't know. I think a good report goes a long way. I could be wrong. That just might be me. I should ask more questions to my clients. <laughs> well, we did. So one thing that we did notice that we want, we were joking about is that we had a client who had deleted a page before checking with the search yeah. console. And so this would be a good use case for it of... You know, she had deleted the page and then you went and checked on Search Console and it turns out that was the most visited page she had on her website. And had she uh, known that, she would never have deleted the page, right? Yeah, exactly. And so this gives you a really quick way as well that if you go to your Search Console page and you're like, you know, clicks, uh, okay, which page Which page is getting the most clicks? Oh, it turns out it's this page. Okay, maybe I won't delete it. Maybe I'll to rewrite it so it'll look fresh and yeah. up to date. Update it, right? Which is something Google does want you to do with your content, right? Yes. Which makes your content better. And then it's just not billions of useless pages on the internet, but you're actually making good, valuable content for people. Um, yes. I think that's one of the best things about SEL, doing those two things together. So it says talk about lead, who did what, who did want oh, reporting. Oh, it didn't Tell want so it, they didn't want reporting. Sorry. I, I <gasps> oh, yeah. So we got a lead a little while ago and we knew it wasn't going to be a client for us. And one of the things we set people up with is the reporting. And this person said, well, I don't want any reporting. I see everything I need in my Shopify store because that tells me sales. Right. But yeah. That doesn't leave room for improvement because it's great. You can see sales and this thing has it, the most sales, but then what? It missing. doesn't. <laughs> it, yeah. So Shopify is really good for everything that happens after so, uh, someone clicks add to cart, like all the data that happens of them going through the checkout and how many orders you got that part. Shopify is like, that's gospel. Take that as your source of truth I think that's happening with your marketing like people coming to your website and which traffic channels are getting the most time on page which pages are they visiting how many pages are they visiting that's not really well handled by your shopify analytics okay. and you know us that would be doing the the marketing and we're supposed to be sending traffic there well we need to know not only like what traffic is getting sent to what pages and which one's converting because one of the ones that we had that we had with another former client is that she was spending a ton of money on Instagram ads and she was getting zero sales for, or like one or two for the thousands of people that are visiting the page. And so she stopped running the Instagram ads because it turns out her custom, she was doing jewelry, her custom pieces that were 
way higher price point that was all done with Google ads. It turns out that was what was making her money, like actually making money. Mm -hmm. So again, you could, you're not, it's not only like how many sales did I get, but you want to look at, okay, what's your return on ad spend? Well, you have to know I'm spending X number of dollars on Google ads and it's getting me actually like thousands of dollars in work versus I'm spending thousands in Instagram ads and it's getting me like one or two sales that are at a lower price point. So mm -hmm. you got to know, like, what's your return? And, it, you know, this is where it's the full spectrum of not only how people are finding your site, but the, out of those sources of traffic, which ones are actually converting. Yeah. And there's so much you can learn, because if you have a certain percentage of people going to your site and they're not taking an action, then, you know, you have to fix something on your site. You might not know what, but then at least you have a place to start. Right. And so yeah. reporting well, just it makes the world a better place. Yeah, it's going to make it a lot easier for you to just be able to see what's going on at a quick glance. It may not like have every single little detail. Oh, there's also one other cool feature that we haven't gotten into as well, mm. which is blending the data. So you can actually have tables with multiple data sources going to it. So and you technically you could have the data from Search Consoles, the keywords, you know, that's a lot of the information in Search Console that you want. The keywords that the specific pages are ranking for. Uh, well, yes, it would be the time on page based on the URL, mm. uh, like whatever, like the about page has this many people spending this much time on it and it's ranking this well, like it's it's average positions this. Yeah. So there's a lot to play with. I mean, are we experts in, well, Looker Studio? We'd like to think so, but like all Google things. We're constantly learning. It's constantly changing, you know, and so it's good to be in there now. You know, there's no time like the present to pick something. I know we often get emails about other companies wanting us to meet with them to move reporting, right? And I think reporting is a lot like your CRM. Like once you've picked one, you're sticking to it or like your project management system. Once you pick something, you're going to stay with it for years, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, unless something really has like a big draw that you just didn't know from before when you picked it, but generally it changing CRM systems is pretty annoying. Changing uh, reporting systems would be hard too, right? Just because of how you learn how to do it. So I say, if you're looking for reporting, try Data Studio. We'll link it in, in the comments, but try Data Studio. Check it out. If you'd like a sample report of ours, just message me. And I will send it to you. And I think, you know, what else can we say about, about Looker Studio besides it's cool? Yeah, definitely a really cool system. I don't get why they changed the name, but whatever it's Google. It sounds been like doing you it. do get why they changed the name. It's just nobody else can understand it because it's all about some other weird company they bought, Google bought. It, yeah, yeah. But what I'm saying is like Looker could have been its own add on to Data Studio. Because right now, Looker is technically its own system as well. So it doesn't really... That's why I'm like, I don't really get why you needed to change the name of this reporting system because technically it doesn't connect right. to it. And it's a stupid name. We all agree. We all agree. Data Studio sounded kind of cool. You know? Yeah, it sounded, exactly. sounded like it had the word data in it, which, you know, was helpful. Made sense thematically <laughs> with what was going on. Setting the report to your client. Here's your Looker Studio report. Yeah. Anyway, we are sadly out of time. Even though we started a bit late today, we don't like to keep you here longer than we say we're going to. Phelan, do you know what's happening next week? That is a great question. No, I don't off the top of my head. Right. It is this. Oh, I, I, darn it. I'm wrong. I thought it was the 24th next week. It's the 17th. So it's graphic design for advertisements Ooh, with Rena and Greg. That's going to be a great topic. Um mm -hmm. I might have to watch that one, to be honest. I got something to learn. <laughs> if you're joining us in the YouTube channel or on a social media business page, we do have a Facebook group where we do meet and discuss all things marketing called Cyberpunk Marketing Geek Mixer. Long name, great people, because it's all a group effort. Anyway, we will see you next time. Bye. 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 The conversation never stops in our Facebook group, Cyberpunk Geeks. Join us at facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash cyberpunk geeks to ask your questions, meet new friends, and learn even more about search, social, and websites.